Vistara by Roseanne Hawke and Robert Ingpen Every day, Mastara and Taj look out onto a sea of yellow red dust and stones. The sand rolls and shifts. Taj's father says it's like the waves of the ocean, and the spinifex bushes are like little boats blown about by the wind. Emmeline wears a white apron and a dress that swishes, and she always forgets to tie the ribbons on her straw hat. She likes to run races with the Nunga girls, but they don't have to wear hats. Emmeline's father manages the station, where there are cattle for a hundred miles. Taj helps his father train the camels that bring supplies up from Port Augusta and go with explorers on their expeditions. Emmeline, do up your ribbons, her mother says, as they watch the sacks being lifted down from the carpeted camel bags. Taj helps, while Mastara stands close. I wish I could go with the explorers, Taj says, when all the work is done. I wish I didn't have to wear this hat, Emmeline throws it to the ground. Your skin is too fair for the sun, Taj says, and you are too young to go on an expedition. Taj disagrees. He asks his father in the morning as he wraps his turban, Pada, may I go with the explorers next month, when they have chosen their camels? Taj's father doesn't say he is too young but he does say something else. I think you will want to take Mastara, and he is not yet strong enough for exploring. He could never keep up with the string. Taj and Emmeline decide to help Mastara grow bigger and stronger. Emmeline feeds him extra food from the homestead kitchen. Yet Mastara doesn't grow as tall as the other camels. He bends his neck and kisses Taj on the head. Taj off offers him more water but Mastara won't drink. He shakes his head and spits it on the ground. His bell goes kalink, kalink, as he treads on Emmeline's hat, where the wind has thrown it up and tossed it down. Taj takes Mastara out further into the desert, so his muscles will grow powerful in the face of the hot and stinging wind. Mastara lifts his long legs over the sandy dirt and salt bush. A crow wheels above them, cawing in the wind. They rock and run so fast, Taj feels like they are flying too. Mr Giles and his explorers come at last. They choose camels for their expedition. Mr Giles picks Rashini first, the strongest bull. Then he chooses twenty-one others. He does not choose Mastara. Taj's father will go with the explorers as their camelier and Taj asks him again, Mastara isn't so big, but he can walk further now, Padar. He is as clever and brave as an Afghan mountain lion. You know we will be going west, guiding the explorers across the empty desert to find the sea. Wild winds like the waves of the ocean will rise covering all of us in dust and sand. We will not have time to search for small lost camels. There will be nothing to do once his father and the explorers leave. Taj unhobbles Mastara and says, Let's go for a ride, my friend. No one wants us today. Mastara kisses Taj's cheek, but Taj doesn't smile. I'm coming too, says Emmeline. She picks up her hat as Taj orders Mastara to kneel. Hooster! She clamours up in front of Taj. Taj whistles. Mastara has learnt to rise quickly. This time Emmeline ties her ribbons. The ground is too far down to pick up a hat. Mastara stamps his feet, ready to go. His bell goes, Kalink! It's so high up here, Emmeline shouts. We are scraping the sky. She laughs and makes Taj smile. She doesn't notice there are no birds flying above them, and the sky to the north is a strange, quiet colour. They go further and further into the desert. Taj sings, and Mastara lifts his feet as if he is dancing. Emmeline laughs. Neither of them see the wall of sand like a mountain in the sea, flowing towards them from the north. Oh no, Taj sees it first. What's that? asks Emmeline, who looks behind them. 
The wind is stronger now, and hot. There is grit in their eyes. Dust storm, quick! And Taj shows Emmeline where to hide. The dust is so thick, Taj and Emmeline can't see each other's faces. They hold hands so they won't blow apart. I can't breathe, Emmeline shouts, but her words are ripped away. Don't talk. Taj's words are faint beneath the screaming of the wind. Emmeline and Taj hide their faces in Mastara's coat. The dark wave bot blots out all the sky, then finally it passes over. Taj and Emmeline spit dust and blink their eyes free of grit. Hooster, Taj says. They climb onto Mastara. Which way is home? Emmeline asks. We've come so far. Taj looks around. The land is calm again, but their tracks can no longer be seen. Emmeline hands Taj her hat. Explorers tie themselves onto camels when they're sleepy or lost. Father says so. We could use my ribbons. Taj laughs. It's a good idea, but we'll use Mastara's reins instead. He will find the way home. It is dusk. Mr Giles, the other explorers, Taj's father, Emmeline's father, and all the station hands are looking for Taj and Emmeline when Mastara trots into the home paddock. Mastara brought us home. Emmeline's voice is a dusty croak. Mr Giles decides he does, he does need a brave young camel who can find the camp after a dust storm. Besides, he'll grow on the way, the explorer says. Taj hugs Mastara's neck and Mastara kisses the top of his head. Two days later, the string of camels sets out on the expedition led by Mr Giles with Taj's father mounted on Roshni. Don't forget to tie your ribbons, Taj calls back. The breeze brings his words and the sound of Mastara's bell closer.